Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today we are out here surf fishing and we're targeting Pompano. That's the goal, fingers crossed. There are a lot of other things that we could potentially catch today, like whiting, croaker, bluefish. Really, we just wanna catch dinner. We have partly cloudy skies. The water isn't that clear. There's a little bit of silt in it, which is good. Pompano like a little bit of silt. They don't want it too clear because they don't feel protected from predator fish, and they don't want it too dark because same thing, they don't feel protected. They feel like they could get ambushed. So the water clarity I think is good. The partly cloudy skies I think are good. And the surf break isn't too big. It won't pull our line around in the water too much. And right now it's high tide. So we'll be fishing the outgoing tide. I do see some folks fishing maybe a hundred yards down the beach. All the folks that know what they're actually doing. I'm just out here farting around trying to figure it out. So first things first, let's get these rods rigged up. My monofilament on the rod is colored and I don't know if that will affect them, but I guess we'll see. So this first rig that I tied on, uh, we bought it from a local tackle shop and a local fishing guide or captain or, oh, he's a commercial fisherman, sells his own pompano rigs. So we're supporting some local folks, although one day I would like to be able to tie my own. They're very, very simple. So this is specifically for green brown water conditions, which I think that's what we have today. I have another one that is designed for blue water that has white and pink. This rig has orange and a chartreuse. And then I bought a third rig that has uh, like a green and chartreuse. So we'll see what works. We also have some fish bites. So I'm gonna start with the easy flea flavor because sand fleas, which we'll get into, are one of the best surf fishing baits to use. This comes in a strip and it's scented. It's supposed to smell like sand fleas. About that big for one. And then maybe I'll just do slightly bigger for the second. We'll try that. That one's small, which I think this one will do better, but I don't know. We're just playing around here. I have a pyramid weight. And now this is ready to be casted out into the surf. <laughs> yeah! Our first one. Oh, you know what fish I forgot that we could potentially catch here? Spanish mackerel. These are supposed to mimic the eggs of a sand flea, which is why we're trying to catch sand flea. I don't think the sand fleas will have eggs on them until March, but who knows, we might be able to find one. Look at my little friend here. Hey, buddy. Clam. So this rod is not a surf fishing rod. This is much better suited for casting spoons and jigs, but it's all we have right now. Do you want to recast it? <laughs> Nick's pants are soaked. He's got coffee all over his hoodie. Is there a fish on? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? What is it? Is it a blue fish? I think it's a blue fish. They have teeth. Oh yeah, they do. So this is a blue fish. Yeah. To the 
work? Oh yeah. He's like 15 and a half. Wow, I just went into full like panic mode. That always happens to me whenever I catch fish because if I'm not keeping them, I wanna get them back in the water as soon as possible. And it's a beautiful bluefish of size limit. Minimum size limit for a bluefish is 12 inches. This guy's about 15 and a half. He hit the sand flea flavored fish bite. So I'm gonna throw more on. We'll get him on ice. We'll get the rods back in the water and this is off to a great start. I'm excited. <laughs> on ice. So we've re-strung the rod and it's tossing it back out. Ooh, nice cast. This process of learning how to do something new takes time. And I find that if you really just enjoy the process of learning, you'll always enjoy yourself and you'll never be disappointed. And eventually you will succeed. Just some food for thought. What's it gonna be? Oh, bluefish. Bluefish? Nice. Yep. That looks like another keeper. Get it up. Get it up. <laughs> nice job, man. Oh, he's twelve for sure. Yeah, for sure. We could get them on there just to make sure. So there to the fork, yep. Another like 15 and a half. <laughs> nice. We're gonna have to look up some recipes because I was ex fully expecting pompano or whiting. I don't, I, like I wasn't really prepared for bluefish. I don't know much about them. I did a quick Google search after we caught the first one and I think some people call them trash fish. So what did he hit? Let's see. So he hit sand flea. And I think he was on the top one, right? That orange, that's sweet. Sunscreen time. Wait a minute. You're telling me we caught crab on a crab? Or do you think he just got stuck by accident? That's good bait. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Hang on. We're gonna go look up what kind of crab this is, and then we'll either use him as bait or we'll release him back. <laughs> look at him, what's he doing? Yum, 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 yum. That's, that's like what I look like when I'm eating food. Yum, 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 yum. For a second, I thought that bird was gonna swoop down out of the sky and steal him out of my hand. I tried to search to see what it was, but it wasn't popping up immediately. And I didn't, you know, want to risk it dying. So I decided to let it go. See you in the kitchen. <laughs> so we're back. We are, I am. <laughs> About to clean these fish. So we have two blue fish. I showed them to Abby as soon as we got here and she was not scared, shockingly. She just kind of sniffed it. She is scared of deer though, like venison. Anytime we have a, um, a deer down, she gets a little funky. So I was very pleased that she was happy with these fish. So let's get to cleaning. All right, we'll start with this guy. One thing that I learned from my research online is that you can bleed the fish out, which I didn't do. So in the future, I will bleed the fish out. I don't exactly know the process, but I know it involves cutting something 
here towards the head gill region and then they bleed out. So that's a note for the future. But for today, we're working with what we got. Um, also, this is my first time filleting a bluefish. So we'll see how this goes. Should be pretty easy though. I'm gonna make a line all the way down. Okay. See, look at her. That's a good girl. See, I'm giving a little tail wag. So I made that line all the way down and now I'm just going to uh, like pry this flesh back and make some cuts. Now there are some bones there. So I'm trying not to pick up the bones as well. And then you'll hit this sort of ridge right in here. And then we'll sort of attack this from the other side until we hit the ridge on the other side. I'm gonna poke through like that. Perfect. So now this bottom side is up and then I can start to trace it. See, all the way back up. There we go, there's the ribs. That's what I was looking for too. Nice, okay. So now again, just like peel it away, little bit by bit. Okay, now that I got up under those ribs, I can pretty much just cut that all the way down. Just like that. So let me do the other side and then we'll get the skin off. I'm just going to get this section up until I can grab a chunk of that meat and then this should come off very easily. Uh, there's a big bloodline on the underside of this that we'll need to cut out. That is what contributes or creates a fishy flavor. So I'm trying to keep my knife blade pointed down towards the skin. Voila. So I missed a little skin, <laughs> but here's the bloodline that we want to get out. And then cutting out that bloodline. There we go. That beautiful little piece of fish will clean off. Okay. Cut that whole thing out. Clean check or almost check. I do need to rinse this off, obviously. There's still some scales and some sort of like residual blood that I need to rinse away, but it is looking mighty fine, if I do say so. And look, we have a full plate of fish to cook. I'm gonna find a recipe and we're gonna get to cooking. So I have here our beautiful bluefish. I've kept this in the refrigerator on ice. I'm making beer battered fish tacos. This recipe is gonna be very loosey goosey. I'm not following anything to a T. So we're gonna sort of create this together. First thing though, is firing up the grill. So I have my portable sportsman here. I'm turning that up to 350. I'm also using a deep dish cast iron to fry up these fish and I have a thermometer. I'll be monitoring the temperature very closely. The temperature has to be between 350 and 375. If it's too cold, you're gonna have greasy fish and if it's too hot, you could burn your fish. So we wanna make sure that we're monitoring that temperature perfectly. Now that the grill is on, let's whip up our beer batter, shall we? We're gonna start with some flour. I'm gonna measure out about a cup. Mm, that's probably good. Next, I'm going in with about two tablespoons of baking powder. Now I'll season it up a little bit. So I've got salt, pepper, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin, coriander, and red pepper flakes. If I had paprika, I would add some paprika too, huh? You like it? Yeah, Oh, really? That's actually pretty spicy. Um, then I won't add any of those. Cool, change of plans. Salt, pepper, and then this. This is mandarin habanero. I have not used this. Oh, this one's already open. I have not used this on fish, but I want a little bit of heat in this. So I'll do a healthy 
dousing of this. Then we'll mix that together. Oh yeah, I can smell the heat. Time for the beer. So I have here some Pacifico. Not gonna lie, we were drinking a couple of these last night. <laughs> I'm gonna add about a cup. Mix that all together. Kind of looks like sea foam. I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna start on our slaw. So this will go on top of the beautiful blue fish. Cilantro. I love cilantro so much. This cutting board that I'm using is by Pip Boss as well and it's magnetic, which can be a little trippy the first time that you use it, but I really like it. The whole reason why it's magnetic is to prevent it from falling whenever you put it on, you know, like the side shelf on your grill. So you don't have to worry about accidentally knocking the cutting board off the shelf. Beautiful. Next, going in with the cabbage, red cabbage. Absolute must for tacos. I bet there's a better way to cut this <laughs> than what I'm doing here, but my goal is to get them very thin. Now we're gonna add three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Sometimes we take shots of this. I would like to do it every day, but I really, at this point, I'm doing it very sporadically. And then one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Mix her up, and then the last thing that we need to add to this is some salt. Voila, that's our slaw. Time to fry these fish. Here's how this works. We have our beautiful pieces of fish. I'm keeping them this size. All I do is throw them in the batter, take my tongs, and just coat these. Let some of the excess drip off, and we drop it in. I'm sure I'll get some comments about that. I feel like that's a signal that I'm a true Floridian, never in shoes. <laughs> flip, flip. Oh, Sorry. That's why you want to wear shoes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm brisking my toes today. I think that looks pretty good. Got a beautiful golden color. Take those off. It smells really good. Should I? Let's do a little taste testing. Whoa. Ooh, that's gonna be so good in a fish taco. Time to put this all together. So I have my toasted corn tortilla. I have some tartar sauce. I'm gonna take my piece of fish, squeeze a lime right on top of the fish. A couple slices of avocado, and then top it with our beautiful slaw, if you will. Cabbage and cilantro mixture. And that right there is our beautiful taco. Wow, that looks awesome. Okay, and oh, oh it's so crunchy, dang it. Turned into a crunchy taco. <laughs> you let your corn tortillas, you know, toast for a little too long, they turn into a hard shell like this. That's okay, it'll still be good. The fish is great, not too fishy. Let's see, let me take another bite. It just has a nice white flaky fit, or <laughs> flaky flesh. The beer batter is great. I and mean, overall, for a meal that we caught, cleaned, and cooked, I'm very happy with this. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. We'll be in Florida for quite a while. So if you have suggestions of other catch, clean, and cooks that we should try, leave it down in the comments below. But that's it. I will see you guys in the next one.